to success. I'm going to show you how great I am. It's time to hit the road to grow with team lead of the Enriquez Group, Realtor Vinny. Hi, you Roach Growth listeners. Today I have uh, Alicia Kramer. All right, get your pen and paper out because we've got a long list. She's a mindset expert, author, coach, and serial entrepreneur. And something you'll you'll find out later on, she has a background in hypnosis too. I mean, this is a, a, a master of many hats. Uh, and thank you, Alicia, for being here today. Thank you, Vinny. Um. So something I, I love asking for the coaches that I get on here, because uh, I do get a variety of different coaches, is what separates you from other coaches? Well, you briefly mentioned I am a certified hypnotherapist. So my background is really in the deeper mindset work. We're not talking about the superficial kind of stuff. A lot of people like to say, oh, I work on mindset with my clients. So I'm a business coach or I'm a sales coach or I'm a this or that or whatever. And I work on mindset because mindset is so important. And absolutely, yes, it is. What I focus on is the deeper stuff, the stuff that is in our subconscious mind. The programs that we have from our childhood, our societal conditioning, the things that we're bumping up against, and we sometimes don't even know why. You know, why is it so hard for me to break through in this area of my life or in my business? We tend to have so many conflicting beliefs. I mean, if you think about your parents, you remember being young and listening to discussions and the the classic uh do as i say not as i do mm. right so what is that putting into our subconscious mind we have so many conflicting beliefs and when we are creating something new for ourselves in our life and we don't have a frame of reference for that we are dragging like all of this heavy baggage on our journey and it creates so many obstacles, so much pain, so much frustration. I work with, and I've been doing this for over a decade. So I've worked with business owners at all different stages of business from the startup, the solopreneur to the CEO of multi-million dollar companies. And it doesn't seem to matter like what type of upbringing you had, even, and I came from a pretty, pretty rough one. So I had a lot of work to do. But even people who maybe had what seemed to be a fairly good life, we've all got it. You know, we grow up in a society where money, you're supposed to want money, but money is bad. You're supposed to achieve great things, but you're supposed to be humble and stay small and not be seen and not be heard. And it is really challenging to create a truly happy, successful life and business with all of those things sort of running as your programming in the background. And no matter how many books you read, no matter how many rah-rah seminars you go to, that stuff doesn't typically go away on its own. You can create new programming that sometimes will trump the old programming but in many cases you're still bumping up against those obstacles yeah i've, I've had um a, a, i mean a variety of different hypnotists on here and mindset people and it's um i forgot how one person described it it's like a um kind of a, a mirror ground but you're going higher up so you still come back with that same item that might pop up yet you're you're you can deal with it better. So it might be something that triggers yet you're able to deal with what's going on and how that program is all working out there. I mean, I've, oh my gosh. Um, and you probably, and any listeners right here have probably heard me talk about it multiple times. Dr. Joe Dispensia uh, talks about the idea, I think at the age of 35 or a computer program, just like you're talking about Alicia. And it's, it's so interesting how the small things you can do to change how you react to something. It's like, okay, instead of doing this, let me just change it a little bit and it might help me not get triggered by this thing or that thing. Yet working with an expert like yourself, 
you're going to do a lot better off than just putting your shoes on instead of left to right, right to left. <laughs> uh, and that's a great point that you make because so many people overcomplicate it. Yeah. And it's true. The mind is complex. Yeah. Um, but we need to stop overcomplicating things so much. And sometimes it's just a little, little reframe, you know, look at it a little bit differently. And we've all had the experience numerous times where you have a little aha, it's just that little shift in perspective. And that can be the thing that helps you break free from what once was this real limitation in your life. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Well, ta talking about your younger years, um, and maybe not the greatest or um, uh, upbringing that you had, kind of walk us through what did that look like, a young Alicia? Sure. So um, I'll give you the the quick quick version mm -hmm. of a long story. So I grew up in a household with a mom who struggled with alcoholism and jumped from boyfriend to boyfriend. So there wasn't a lot of stability. I saw her be physically abused, um, gun to her head and the whole nine yards. So a lot of trauma around that. When I was about, I think, 11, 12 ish, it, it really started to hit when I was 10, but it progressed. I went into a really deep depression and I had a lot of self self esteem issues, a lot of self confidence issues, a lot of self worth issues. And I started drinking at a very, very young age, mm -hmm. had a lot of um, depression to the point where I had suicidal ideations. It was really not pleasant. Um, and that kind of continued on into my early 20s. So when you're in an environment like that and you're around people that are toxic, that puts a lot of, you know, a lot of less than ideal things in, in your head and your concept of yourself. And so I had all these self-worth issues, all these confidence issues, deep depression all the way into my 20s. When I was 18, I knew I wanted to be a business owner. I didn't even know exactly what that looked like. My parents and were dairy farmers. So they, my mom, I always heard, heard my mom talk about how much better it was to not have to work for someone else, even though they were working seven days a week from the time that they woke up in the morning until the time that they went to bed at night, they were struggling financially. They were always stressed out, but something in that just must have stuck with me. So I started a network marketing business when I was 18. Of course, like most people, wasn't really in the right headspace to make that work. But the dream sort of didn't die. And when I was in my early 20s, I moved from Wisconsin out to California. I remember going to a workshop with Frank Kurt, and that's back before he was the big internet guru that he is today. He was still sort of like, you know, a budding guru, you could say. And I was going to start a real business, not a network marketing business. And uh, so I opened this online store back before there was Shopify and e-commerce and all this stuff, right? When you actually had to contact real companies to drop ship products. My sense of business was so skewed. My mindset was absolutely awful. I ended up filing bankruptcy on that business and it was completely devastating. So now fast forward, the dream didn't go away. And I dabbled in a couple things here and there. In 2005, I was out with some girlfriends having a couple of drinks and I was given a date rape drug. So when I came to, I had, I'd been physically and sexually assaulted it was incredibly traumatic for me. I had symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. And I remember thinking to myself one day, and like I said, this is a really short story. <laughs> I remember thinking to myself one day, if I don't do something to cure myself, this is going to kill me. I was in so much stress, so much fear, so much emotional pain. And so I went on this deep healing journey. I booked um, 
appointments with every type of alternative health practitioner I could find because I'd been on all the antidepressants when I was a kid. None of those worked for me. I was not going to turn to medication. I knew that was not a solution. I scheduled with a hypnotherapist, an EFT practitioner, uh, several different types of energy workers. I really, I started listening to Tony Robbins and Bob Proctor and all of these people and really like went on this deep, deep um, inner journey of healing and not superficial healing, but like really starting to like face my stuff and work through all of those old hurts. And the transformation was so profound that I knew I wanted to help other people. And that kind of was like the beginning of that inner calling to help people in that really deep, meaningful way. So I opened an EFT practice. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques. It's an alternative um, therapy where you heal emotional issues with uh, this acupressure type of uh, technique. And I had some clients and I had a little bit of success, but it wasn't enough to pay the bills because I still didn't have any real business chops. Um, so fast forward again, I'm work managing a cell phone store to pay the bills, um, still working with some of my clients on the side and surprise, surprise, I'm 28 years old. I get pregnant. I was not expecting that had no intention <laughs> of doing that with my life. And that was one of the most amazing things that ever happened to me because I again had that heart to heart with myself and I remember sitting in that cell phone store thinking to myself, there is no way I'm going to send this baby off to some stranger to watch, raise him basically for me while I'm working at this job that I don't want to be at. I'm just, I it wasn't in my heart to be there. And I knew I had to do it right this time. So I went back to school. I got my certification as a hypnotherapist from HMI, a nationally accredited college of hypnotherapy, got my master's degree in metaphysical science, went back to school for psychology, became somehow superwoman in spite of like being pregnant and managing a cell phone store. And um, right after my son was born, I opened a brick and mortar hypnotherapy practice. And that was the end of ever being an employee ever again. And I just dove deep into um, really, um, understanding marketing and, um, business and obviously, you know, continuing to work on my mindset stuff so that I could actually get it. I, my, my mantra is I'm going to do it right this time, <laughs> uh, from lots of failures to, you know, uh, lots of, of success that came with a lot of, you know, a lot of inner work. Um, and, as they say, sort of the rest is history because now I've, you know, built an international company where I work with business owners all over the world to help them overcome their stuff so they can create the business and the life that they truly deserve. Well, there's a lot of, a lot of things to, to unpack. So let me go back to the beginning and kind of work, uh, kind of work forward. <clears throat> so the, your, you said your parents for the dairy farm was, and I know you said your mom was kind of dating around and having issues. So was she kind of running the farm and then as she so would get new people? What ended up happening was, um, so she was a, a, we'll call her a boyfriend hopper. Like we'd move from one yeah. boyfriend's house into the next boyfriend's house um, until I was six. Then she met the farmer. Oh, okay. Um, so we then moved in there and then that became the rest of the story, so to speak. Okay. Um, so that hopefully clarifies yeah. that piece there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, and then with the rape that happened to yourself, I mean, it's interesting because you, you brought up the fact of that you had to take control of the situation and take the blame, I guess, yourself. Yet, was there a moment where you blame the outside world or blame that person and didn't didn't internalize it? Or what what was that process like of transitioning from internalizing it, knowing that you had to do some work on yourself so this thing wouldn't happen again instead of blaming the person or the situation? So I was of that disempowered mindset that a lot of people were in for pretty much my whole life. You know, I'm the victim. It's not fair. 
you know, I should have had better parents. I shouldn't have been neglected. I, you know, all of the, it's their fault that I'm broken, that mm -hmm. I'm in pain. When I was going through the trauma from that, there were a lot of different things going on in my head. Part of me felt like there was something I did wrong. Obviously, I was upset um, at a lot of people who maybe could have prevented that from happening. People who were friends that could have stepped in and that didn't have to happen, but it did. In all honesty, I was in so much shock that I wasn't as much in the victim mindset. Like I was, but I was actually just in a state of trauma from the experience. So it wasn't the same kind of like, woe is me. I'm a victim. It's not fair. It was fear. So if you think about the way that we feel when we're experiencing different types of emotional states, depression feels very different than anger, right? Mm. It, it's, it's just, it's a different frequency. It's a different physiology. It affects our thinking differently. So rather than being in a deep state of depression, which is actually what I was prior to that, it took me into a state of trauma and extreme fear. So I wasn't necessarily in the dwelly dwelly victim as much as I just couldn't function because I was so chronically, um, I had so much chronic anxiety and stress and fear. Fear but that it would happen again? If, um, fear of everything. I mean, geez, my my phone would ring and I would just like panic. I would wake mm -hmm. up in the middle of the night just trembling and shaking. Um, so when I think back on that time in my life, it's not it's not the easiest thing to explain to another person unless they've experienced something like that. Mm -hmm. Because certainly there's never been another time in my life where I've experienced anything like that. And I would never obviously wish that on anyone. Uh, but because that was such a jarring experience from my typical state, which was actually pretty low at that point in my life, I had a mm -hmm. lot of I'm a victim. It's not fair. You know, life sucks. <laughs> um, that actually shook me from that to an even deeper state where I recognize I can't live like this. And mm. that was the catalyst for me to, to become so aware that I had to do something really extremely different than I'd ever done before to pull myself out of that. And we don't have to have that type of rock bottom experience to begin our transformational journey which is a good thing. You know, a lot of people, they experience their rock bottom at all different levels. You don't have to get to homelessness to finally, you know, pick yourself up and pull yourself out of it. Well, you have to be, I think, you have to first understand that you have a problem and be willing to change. Do you think that there's something you could have said or a friend of yours could have said to you before that incident to guide you to change, to make you want to change? That's a really interesting question. Now, I don't want to get too metaphysical and too woo-woo here yeah. because that is sometimes a little bit outside of people's comfort zone and what they're able to receive. But here is what I want to just say about that is when someone is in a chronic negative state, they are perceiving their world through that lens. So we've all been in a situation where we're really down and out. Maybe something happened. It really just kind of knocked us out of our, our balance and we're just plain being negative. And someone comes along and they're just, you know, happy go lucky. And they give you the positive talk. How do you respond to that? Leave me alone. 
<laughs> you know, maybe there's some choice words going through your head that if you're a nice person, you're not going to say out loud, but you're thinking it yeah. right because you're not you're not in vibrational alignment with receiving that you're down here. And if you're holding a really dominant negative mindset, you can be listening to your, your, your spiritual inspiration, right? Whatever that thing is for you, the person you look up to the most, and it's going to feel off to you. You're not able to receive that. So would it have been great if somebody would have, you know, come into my life and helped me to pull myself out of it? Absolutely. But the reality was, is that I was in such a chronic negative state that it would have probably taken, you know, a burning bush to, to wake me up out of that mindset. Um, certainly, for people who are not like deep, deep, deep in the depths of their despair, um, you know, when when someone's feeling a little down, you can give someone a little pep talk, a little pick me up, pull them out of it. But all of us have people in our lives that we see have so much potential. We can see it. We're like, why can't you see it? You know, just stop the drinking. Just stop the, you know, the get out of that dysfunctional relationship, get a better job that, you know, gives you a sense of purpose. We can see how that thing is toxic to them and that they're stuck in that behavior. But you'll notice that no matter how much you want that for someone, no matter how much you see the potential in them, it's not until they're willing to make the change that any of that stuff is really going to make any difference. And that's why interventions are oftentimes not very effective because we have to want to change. And that's why I made that quick reference to our rock bottom. Everyone's rock bottom is different. You know, for some people that literally means homelessness, losing their, their wife and their kids, and they're still out on the street begging for money so they can buy a bottle of booze. Uh, for other people, they have too much to drink, they miss a day of, of work, or they're late for an important meeting or something like that. And that's their rock bottom that conflicts with their values. And that's the moment where they say, I have to change, something has to change. But until you get to that place within yourself, it's very difficult to do the things that are necessary to really start to create the change because we have so much of our old programming that keeps pulling us back, pulling us back, pulling us back into those old habits, those old beliefs, those old expectations. Now, when someone is listening to this and they're thinking to themselves, I'm freaking tired of getting in my own way. I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of not having the amount of money that I know I could have. I'm tired of not having the relationship that I could have or the this or that or the other thing. What we want to do is we want to pull enough on their heartstrings to wake them up so that they feel the conviction within themselves. And if there's anything that we can do to really support another person, it's helping them to really see what's possible for them. Because a lot of us didn't have that. And in some cases, we still don't have that. And even if you're listening to all of the inspirational stuff, it's like, oh, that's nice. That's nice for other people, but it's not going to work for me. And if you can look at someone in the eyes and you can say, I know that you can do this. Sometimes that little bit right there is the thing that they need. And Damn, if somebody would have said that to me, maybe that's all I would have needed to not have to go through all of that. But one thing I will say is that I'm so grateful that I did get out of it. Now, let's let's jump forward uh, to your transition from working at a cellular store to opening up your own brick and mortar business. I mean, what was the process 
and the time frame. I know you had your big why now because you had your child, right? And what was the process of saying, okay, I want to do this to actually quitting your job and doing it? So I knew that I needed to develop skills, Yeah, which is why I like full on went into crazy learning and implementation mode. If I had to sort of summarize it, I would say that there was such a strong desire in me that I was able to push through my resistance and fears and see that there were certain things that I needed to do. Now, I had already developed a fair amount of skills from previous attempts at business. So there were a few things that I already knew, but there was also a lot that I needed to learn. I hired um, coaches and mentors and invested in a lot of trainings so that I could develop those skills. And one of the key things, and this is um, something that we all see people doing wrong all the time, is it's not enough to just hire the coach or to go through the training. You've got to implement. Hmm. So for me, it became about a lot of implementation. Um, so not just learning the skills, but putting them into practice immediately. If I would have just taken the hypnotherapy training, got my, you know, fancy, fancy certifications, I've got all the nice hangy things on the wall, um, that would never have been enough to get traction as a business owner and start bringing in revenue so that I could continue on that trajectory. So it was marketing, you know, writing a press release, getting it out to the local newspaper. I mean, I literally was immersing myself in the stuff, the actions that needed to be taken to get that momentum um, and continuing on that trajectory. Because a lot of people will do the initial stuff, but then they don't have consistency. So they get a little bit of success. And then it turns into, you know, crickets chirping, the phone's not ringing, the money's not flowing in. And then all of the fears, the doubts and the insecurities start to come up and that becomes a slippery slope. And then you start to gain negative momentum in the wrong direction. How often for yourself, and I know you're doing a lot of um, self work. And was there still times where that younger Alicia would say, what are you doing? Go oh, back yeah. to the job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and, and she still pops up a little bit to this day. And that's after, you know, doing like, you know, well over a decade of deep inner work. This is an ongoing journey. It does not stop. I'm, you know, and luckily, you know, with experience, the more you work through these things, you develop sort of these new knowns. Like, yeah. I've been through this before. I can get through this again. But sometimes when we bump up against some of that old stuff, it's it's scary. Our mind is really good at convincing us that that's it. It's over. It's done. It's too hard. It's not worth it. Just pack it up. I'm, you know, I'm out of here, <laughs> right? There's got to be an easier way. <laughs> so how would you, when that person pops up, what would you do? You brought it up a little bit. Hey, these are the knowns. I've done it before. Was it reminding you of your successes? Is that your past? Is it affirmations? I mean, what what would usually get you past that that negative thought? So one of the things that I love to share here, because this is oftentimes misunderstood, uh, is that as you are up leveling, so anytime you are reaching for something new that you have not experienced before, you are moving into unknown territory. Your subconscious mind does not have a frame of reference and it is going to trigger all sorts of nasty crap. 
Some people call it new level, new devil. Some people say it's hitting your upper limit. There's all different cutesy terms that people give it, but it's really just a phenomenon that occurs anytime you're up leveling to a new level of success, whether that is making more money, it is um, being out there and being seen by more people. It is, you know, whatever the thing is. And so when that happens, you're going to encounter fears, doubts, insecurities, limiting beliefs, old patterns, old self-image stuff that does not match who you are becoming, who you are stepping into. And I always tell my clients, I know it doesn't feel good when you're going through it. I know it seems very real, but I promise you this is a good thing. This is the indicator that you are ready to break through to the next level, but you've got to do the work because a lot of people hit that and they retreat. They, they're like, it's too hard. It's never going to work. And they give up. But if you can see that this just means that there's some old stuff that you've got to let go of. And there's a lot of tools I teach my clients. I teach them EFT. I teach them how to release negative, emotionally charged thoughts and feelings. I teach them how to create new, new beliefs and new sensations and new knowns in the subconscious mind that support that growth. But now when you're going through that, you've got to remind yourself, you've got to, you've got to be able to be objective separate yourself, detach a little bit from the emotional intensity that you're going through and be the coach to yourself and have that, that sort of that talk, if you will, with yourself and remind yourself, this is not as real as it seems. This just means that there are old beliefs, old fears, old patterns, old stuff from my past that I have to break through. I have to shift this stuff. And when I do, on the other side of that is what I'm reaching for. It will happen. I've worked with a lot of my clients for many years. And I joke, I say they don't stay with me for years because they're not getting results. They would have left a long time ago. The reason that they stay with me is because they've got their foot on the accelerator and they're creating amazing things in their life. And that means when you're on that accelerator, right? I like to use the analogy. You're on the interstate and you're going 70 miles an hour. You're going to hit a lot more bugs than when you're just putt putting along at 25, 30 miles an hour, right? Mm. So when you are doing this and you bump up against this stuff, sometimes it's going to be easier and sometimes it's going to be really, really, really hard. And I've seen this even with my clients who they have very successful companies. They've been through it with me before. We've gotten them to so many up levels. Their income is exponentially more than it used to be. Their business is exponentially more successful than it used to be. And they still bump up against the stuff. And I've, you know, I've heard it so many times. Is there something wrong with me? You know, why do I keep going into this? Like, there's nothing wrong with you. This is normal. This is the way the mind works. And it's just part of the process and you can get through it. And when you do, there's so much better on the other side of it. Well, if someone's listening right now and they're, uh, they're, they're seeing that a lot of the stuff you're talking about, Alicia, is resonating with them. I mean, what's the best way of them reaching out, finding more information about uh, what you and your company have to offer? Best way is my website. AliciaKramer.com, A-L-I-C-I-A-C-R-A-M-E-R.com. Uh, lots of information there, uh, free hypnosis audios um, to help work on your inner game. Uh, all my social media links are there if you like to you know, connect on social media. Um, just poke around, explore. There's you know, lots, of, lots of value there. And Alicia's information is in the show notes. Um, Alicia, I want to finish off with this last last question. If we were talking in five years from now, I know you you have a lot of fires burning right now. Where do you see 
yourself, your company being maybe other other avenues you might branch out in the future? So I've been a serial entrepreneur. I don't expect that to ever end. Um, Where that can lead in five years, who knows? But one thing has remained consistent, and that is my, my coaching practice. I've always said I will probably always do that. I would probably do that to some capacity, even if I wasn't, you know, being paid for it because I just love it. But my new um, my new vision is building out my inner game academy, which is my membership program where we have just a ton of supportive uh resources for overcoming these types of subconscious things and building up your belief structure at the subconscious level of the mind so you can achieve what you want in your life and business. And I just keep bringing in more and more amazing contributors. Uh, I obviously am the specialist in terms of the mindset stuff, but I'm partnering with so many incredible thought leaders and industry experts on bringing valuable content into that um that membership and uh, my vision for that is to just continue to make that such an empowering resource for business owners at such a um, affordable price that people at all stages, I mean, I have people in there right now who are, their businesses are very, very successful. So this isn't just for newbies, but it is accessible to people who are just getting their feet wet and are, you know, like, I'm committed. I'm going all in. Um, So that's something that I'm going to continue to push forward with. And I really just, you know, I really just feel like we're all contributing to this movement. Like, let's make this world a better place. We're seeing so much really nasty stuff happening right now. And a lot of us just need to step up and be the light because there's so much fear. There's so much stress. There's so much uncertainty right now. And just, you know, inspiring people to say yes to themselves, honor themselves, do what's good, not only for you and your family, but you have a gift and just be out there and let it, let it, let it be the light. Well, thank you, uh, Alicia, for being on the, the Road to Growth podcast. I mean, for everyone listening right there, I mean, you heard Alicia's journey, I mean, with alcoholism, dealing with, you mean, uh, a huge item that they came about with with the rape yet if i mean if you're in a situation wherever it might be don't allow yourself to need the low point to get to the high point i mean find find basically a coach i mean it could be alicia it could be whoever it might be but find that that person that that person around you that knows that you're loved know you have so much more to grow because you are loved and someone out there wants to help you. It's just a matter of if you're willing to listen uh, to them. Uh, thank you, Alicia, for, for being here. Go on the show notes, everyone. Uh, go to Alicia's website. Go to her Instagram. Go to all her different platforms out there. And please subscribe to the, the Road Growth Podcast. Thank you, guys. Have a great rest of your day.